we gather together to worship God, our Rock and our Redeemer, the one in whom we find refuge. You are our Rock and our Fortress, O God. Into your hands we place our lives. Church Street online service today. I would like to say a special welcome to our moms as we celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, there is a saying that says, a mom is she that can take the place of all others, but whose place no one else can take. So thank you to our moms and have a very blessed Mother's Day today. I would also like to take this opportunity to just remind our members that um, if there is a need, whether it be prayer, just a chat, or if you find yourself struggling to make ends meet at the end of the month, um, please remember to feel free and contact our um, Church Street Care Group, any of the members, a society steward, or Reverend Graham Goodwin. Uh, you can just give us a call, send us a WhatsApp or an SMS, but um, please feel free to make contact. Uh, don't struggle alone. Um, remember that we are a Church Street family and we are here for each other. Thank you. God bless. For all the mothers who are still with us, and for those who have left us, we give thanks today. For all those who mothered us, some in addition to our own mothers, some in place of absent mothers, we recognize you and give thanks for you. For all women who have been figures of grace and love in our lives, your example has been meaningful to us. During this time of physical distance, we wish we could be nearer to our mothers and our children to us. We pray that this day brings phone calls and messages, love and light your way. Mothers and mothering women, we love you. God with a mother's heart, you gather us as your children. You comfort and hold us in your warm embrace. When we hurt, your arms enfold us. When we are afraid, your wings protect us. When we are hungry, you feed us with the bread of life. God with a mother's heart, your love surrounds and supports us in good times and in tough, in the midst of joy and pain, always and everywhere. You will never leave nor abandon us.
O wisdom divine, just as you inspired the mothers of our faith, grant us your knowledge and discernment so that we can learn how to be clever in our compassion and courageous in our faith. Through Christ and in the Spirit. Amen. Good morning, congregation. Our reading this morning is taken out of the book of Peter, 1 Peter 2, verses 2 to 10. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special position, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Our reading this morning is from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I, do, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Friends, I'm reminded of a little saying that takes me back to my childhood. It goes a little something like this. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors and there's all the people. I'd like to add to it a little bit. You can have a church without a steeple, but you can't have a church without any people. Today I'm sharing our reflection inside our empty church. We are no longer gathered here for worship, and in a sense it may seem that our church is closed, but it is not. I'm only sitting here in our sanctuary. Our church is very much alive. We are just no longer gathering inside this building. One of the opportunities that we have right now is to revisit the question of what it means to be a church. And now more than ever, we are reminded that church is not a building. It's a living community of people connected to one another in our shared experience of God through Jesus Christ. The church cannot be closed because we are the church. And as long as we continue to remain connected to one another, as long as we continue to embody the spirit of God for one another and the world as Jesus did, the church lives on. It has been alive throughout this whole week in conversations, in acts of care and in challenging one another to offer what we can to this moment. The readings we heard today invite us to reimagine what we might think of when we think of being a Christian. And certainly, it's not all about attending church. As we reimagine what it means to be people of faith, what really stands out to me is the dynamic and person-centered ways in which our faith is defined in these passages. Our belonging to this community 
that we call the church is described as being living stones which are built together. Our faith is not built on a set of ideas, but on the way in which God is embodied for us in a person, in Jesus. At a time when we are living with uncertainty and the way in which we gather has changed, it is helpful to remember that our faith is not about certainty, but rather about the direction our lives take, what they point to in the midst of uncertainty. The words of Jesus that we heard were spoken in a moment of uncertainty, and what Jesus pointed his disciples to was himself, the relationship that they had with him. They were invited to move closer to the God embodied in Jesus. And in the reading from Peter, we are invited to embody that presence ourselves. That is what it means to be a royal priesthood. As Rob Bell in his book Velvet Elvis pointed out, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus was not making claims about one religion being better than all other religions. That completely misses the point, the depth, and the truth. Rather, Jesus was telling those who were following him that his way is the way to the depth of reality. This kind of life that Jesus was living perfectly and completely in connection and cooperation with God is the best possible way for a person to live. What Jesus is inviting us into is not a set of beliefs, but a way of living he embodied for us, and is a way of living that leads us to a lived experience of dwelling in the presence of God, here and now. It is this way of life that we are invited to pursue and to live out, however imperfectly, Robert Bell goes on to say, I'm convinced being generous is a better way to live. I'm convinced forgiving people and not carrying around bitterness is a better way to live. I'm convinced that having compassion is a better way to live. I'm convinced pursuing peace in every situation is a better way to live. I'm convinced listening to the wisdom of others is a better way to live. I'm convinced being honest with people is a better way to live. These ways resonate with truth, and they are so simple, and maybe that's why they are so hard to practice, which is why we need a community to embody them for us and to encourage us and challenge us as we seek to live in this way together. However many times we fail, for one another, we are community that encourage challenge and restore each other to this way. Rob Bell reminds us that Christian faith is alive only when it is listening, innovating, and letting go of whatever has gotten in the way of Jesus, and embracing whatever will help us to be more and more the people that God wants us to be. And so maybe this is a time of opportunity for us, Maybe we are in being invited back to what the gospel is really all about. Maybe there is something to celebrate in the fact that our presence here in the Weinberg community has moved from this place. And so friends, maybe there is something to celebrate in the fact that our presence in the Weinberg community has moved at this moment from our sanctuary here to our church kitchen. Maybe there's something to celebrate in the fact that this is the place where we are being present for the Weinberg community. And although we might not be able to gather around our altar table and share in the bread and wine together, maybe this is the place where Jesus is showing up for us. Maybe this is the place where we are able to share the body of Christ. And I think that as a church street community, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to Terence who has been our presence here on site. He's been here at Church Street since the lockdown. He locked down on our site, and he has been the face of our service to the community here in this place. So I want to say thank you to Terence, 
And I also wanted to ask Terence um, why this is important. Um, what does it mean to follow Jesus? And what does this feeding the most vulnerable around us have to do with following Jesus? So Terence, over to you. <laughs> Good afternoon, fellow pilgrims. I think I just want to give thanks to Weinberg community for each and everything that you are doing for, for the vulnerable. And to answer the questions that Reverend Graham has asked, I think one must understand what it means to be a disciple of Christ. So we thank God as the community that we, in lockdown, we have continued to, to be a practical church in each and everything that we, we are doing. So the, the, the second question, in a nutshell, it means that whatever we do each and every Sunday, whatever we were doing before lockdown is very, very important. But what we are doing now is more important. We have become a practical church that is feeding more than 60 people each and every day. So we thank God for, for that. Back to you, Rev. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth, her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace endued. And so friends, maybe there is grace in the fact that we are watching this reflection in our own homes and not worshipping in our sanctuary today. I don't know about you, but sometimes home can be the hardest place to be a Christ follower. For me, it's fairly easy to be nice to people that I'm only going to see for an hour on a Sunday. It's relatively easy to be kind to strangers that I'm not deeply invested in. But it's in the relationships where I share a close personal bond with someone. It's in the relationships where I'm deeply invested in others that it's a little bit harder to sometimes express grace. In those places where I know all their imperfections and they know mine, sometimes it's harder to forgive. Sometimes it's harder to be kind. It's often much easier to take a whole lot for granted in those relationships. And that's where grace really becomes real and not just a word. That's where embodying Jesus for one another moves from being a nice thought to being a demanding and yet liberating discipline. Loving, drawing boundaries with those that we are closest to is part of our spiritual journey and the place where our faith is sometimes really tested. Maybe in this moment we're invited to getting back to what our faith is really about, the way in which we live with one another, the way in which we live in the world, the way in which we open ourselves to the presence of God that we are encountering in one another and the way in which we express the presence of God for one another. We often reduce these words that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, into some kind of sorting system. As if Jesus was all about sorting out who gets into heaven and who goes to hell. For Jesus, the question wasn't how do I get into heaven? but rather how do we bring heaven here? Salvation is everyone and everything being brought back into harmony with God. And to defer the work of Jesus to what happens when I die is the great heresy. And to reduce this life into some kind of test that determines what happens in the next turns God into a bit of a monster. Which is why it's disturbing that people sometimes talk about hell in relation to verses like the ones we've heard today. Hell is not a place that God sends us to if we don't believe or behave as we should. 
Tell us what we have and continue to create for ourselves. Poverty, injustice, suffering. These are realities that are with us here and now. And how the grace of God in Jesus is revealed is in challenging these realities. For Jesus invites us out of them into new ways of being. Ways that resonate with truth and lead to our flourishing. Irenaeus famously said, The glory of God is a human being fully alive. Now, St. Irenaeus was a raging misogynist who is not my favorite early church writer. But on this one, I think he gets it right. And the fact that these words come from someone who I am often deeply disturbed by is testimony to the way in which God encounters us through one another. The moment God fits into our neat lines and expectations, we are no longer dealing with God. God has always and continues to come to us in and through imperfect and broken human lives. But each of us, in spite of our limitations and imperfections, has the potential to express the grace of God in the world. We just have to cooperate with that grace, that grace that we find in Jesus. Let us embody it for one another. For that is what being a holy people really means, a royal priesthood. And may we allow believing in Jesus to mean more than just something we do with our heads. Let it be something that opens our hearts, and more than that, opens our hands and takes our feet on a journey. And may we, as we hear this invitation to believe in Jesus once again today, know most of all that Jesus believes in us even if we do not recognize it yet. Friends, grace, mercy, and truth are yours. In the name of the triune God. Amen. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba Father. You hear us calling, you hear us calling, Abba Father. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. in your clift for your love security protection and comfort in these bizarre times Jesus the cornerstone of all that is and was and will become we offer our humble prayer to you please be the solid foundation for the world's people we pray for the sick lonely poor unemployed mentally challenged, the frontline workers, and those feeding the hungry. Be the pillar of strength for our government, leaders and scientists as well as doctors, as they make life-affecting decisions daily. Please, Lord, support our families 
where the breadwinner has lost his or her job and finances have become a problem. We pray for the already compromised by unemployment, lack of housing, hunger, violence, AIDS, TB and cancer, as well as frailty of mind and body. We pray for the addicts who have no fix and are disrupting lives and tearing families apart. The victims of dis domestic violence. We pray for Kevin Needham at the marsh and the children as well as their parents. Lord, life is awash with troubles and problems that seem endless and unsolvable. We are grains of sand and you are the potter. So make us, mold us, melt us, fill us, use us as we face each new day with new challenges. Our times are in your hands, along with the rest of your world. And so we ask once more for your healing, guidance and protection. Thou must save and thou alone, Lord Jesus. Into your hands we commit our spirits and all we have prayed for. Amen. May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless us. May God, who became incarnate by Mary, bless us. May God, who blew... May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless us. May God, who became incarnate by Mary, bless us. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless us. May Almighty God bless us, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>